Hello, and have I got a very special treat for you today. This video that I'm going to show you today is the second part of a three-part video series that myself, Scott Friesian of Simpletivity and Francesco D'Alesso of Keep Productive have put together just for you guys. The theme of the videos are the past, the present and the future and Francesco has put the past, what tasks and tools did we use in the past. This video that I'm showing you here on my channel is the present, what are we using today and why. And in the third part which will be shown on Scott Friesian's video uh, channel which is Simpletivity, that one is talking about the future of apps and where it's going and what we'd probably like to see. So let's get straight into this with this second part. If you've missed the first part then there's a link in the show notes below that will take you to Francesco's channel and if you want to watch the third part that's on Scott's channel Simpletivity which also is linked in the show notes below. So let's get straight into it with what are we using today? Hi guys, welcome back to this is second part and if you missed the first part that's over on Francesco's channel so if you haven't missed, seen that one we're talking about the past over on Francesco's channel. Joining me on this three continents call we've got the EU, we've got Europe just and we've got Canada and we've got over here we've got Asia so we've got Francesco representing Europe <laughs> for now just. and we've got Scott <laughs> over in Canada and of course I'm over here in Asia. So in this one, this part we're talking about the present, what are we using now? So I'm gonna ask you Scott if you can start us off with what are the tools and apps and productivity tools we're using right now? Sure, thanks so much Carl. You know, for those who subscribe to my channel or maybe have watched some of my content on both of your channels, uh, Trello is uh, a big part of my life and I've been a Trello user uh, for nearly, uh, you know, I'm, I'm almost pushing into that decade, uh, decade long era. But, uh, you know, I was first introduced to Trello a number of years ago. I, I understood it. I thought it made sense. But I revisit it a few years later. And what I love about Trello, why I still use it to this day, why I offer Trello uh, consulting and training services is that it's such a flexible tool. You know, Trello may have started as a project management tool. Its initial purpose was to help teams with their, their workflows and to manage their processes, uh, maybe reduce email communication. But I think even Trello itself is surprised at where it has gone and how many different industries, how many different people are using Trello in so many different ways. I've planned complete vacations on Trello. People are planning their weddings on Trello. They're, they're managing, there's almost every industry that I've touched in some way as I've consulted or helped someone implement um, or maybe refine their Trello processes. So what, what I love about the, uh, the Trello system is that you know, no matter what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, whether it's just a simple task list, maybe for yourself, or if you want to manage hundreds of people with hundreds of projects, um, you can do that within that uh, application. Uh, another tool that I use uh, frequently, it's a standby for me, is Google Keep. And that's been my go-to notes app uh, for the last three or four years. Now, I was a former Evernote user. Uh, you know, I think all of us, uh, it's hard to find people on this planet who haven't in some way <laughs> a poor form. But what I love about Google Keep is its simplicity. And as opposed to writing uh, articles, opposed to writing very lengthy meeting notes or, or, or full-length articles and that type of thing, I needed something that was really, really quick fast, easy. I wanted the shortest distance between up here to my computer or to my smartphone. And so for me, Google keeps that need very, very well. Now, most of my own notes have a fairly short lifespan. I mean, many of the notes within Google Keep for me only last about two weeks and then they're either archived, deleted, or, or maybe the contents of that note go somewhere else, right? It goes to a proper mm. file or it becomes a video, something like that. But Google Keep for me is one of those standby tools where if that idea pops in my head, I want something quick, whether it's a voice narration, whether it's taking an image of something, whether it's just jotting down a quick note, Google Keep is, is a, a trusted app within my, uh, my own personal productivity suite. And then maybe the last tool that I'll mention 
And I know we probably don't think of it as a productivity tool, like a you know, task list, for example, or a project management suite, but that's my calendar. And specifically for me, that's Google Calendar. Now, again, we all use calendars, whether you use Outlook, whether you use Apple, whether you use Google, but I find that your calendar can be so much more than just a place to manage meetings and events. And in fact, I encourage a number of my clients to use their calendar as a to-do list. And I don't just mean using the task function or using something else that may be built into the calendar, but actually converting any calendar into a task list. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, most of us were, regardless of the industry, regardless of what we do, we're spending time with our calendar. And one of the complaints that I hear, it's something that I felt many years ago, is that I had to go to other applications to find out what I was doing, right? That's another tab. It's another mm. app. Oh, did I remember to open this up today? Mm. Well, you usually don't have to remember to open up your calendar. You're, mm. you're already looking at it. You, you need to have your calendar open and review it regularly. So I consider it probably one of my most valuable productivity mm. tools. Mm. And how about you, uh, Francesco? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good point. Uh, mine is mainly used freelancing at the moment. Uh, so I use... I'd say three core tools. Uh, the first is Notion. Uh, it's a fairly new application. So again, a, a quite a risky one to go for. Uh, it's only been out a year and a bit, but it's an application that I'm using to manage projects and uh, sort of visually organize uh, the majority of my life. <laughs> um, I also use Todoist uh, for basically managing my next 30 days of tasks. Uh, and I find that just really attractive to use. Uh, I don't use it as advanced as I used to use it. Uh, I did set up videos that looked crazy now that I look back, but <laughs> again, that's you know how progression goes when you're using a tool. Um, and I use, like Scott does, Google Calendar. Um, uh, but I use on iOS an application called Calendars 5 by Readle, which just works really great because if you just want it to make it look better on that device, uh, it's just gonna look so much better. Now I do use a couple of other tools for like client work and stuff like that. It's like Google Drive for taking docs and Trello and, and even Bear Notes as well for writing up things. But they're really more utilities to other pieces of work. But yeah, so Notion, Todoist and Google Calendar are my main personal management systems. <laughs> I think I think I, I I'm uh, I'm I'm a loner then because I'm I'm on the Apple calendar now. The funny thing is, is when Google switched over to their new design, I thought, oh, this looks really nice, and I, and I set up my actually English language um, business using a Google Calendar uh, because our company's email and everything runs through Google, and I use that because I, I, to be honest, Google's. Um, booking system where I can block out uh, classes where they can book times uh, is just fantastic. It's, I mean, I can't do that with Apple. Um, but for my personal calendar and, and my, my productivity business, that's all run through Apple calendar. And it's largely visual. There's no other reason for it. I and mean, I was thinking about this yesterday. I thought the only reason I use Apple calendar is visual. Now, I also use and I meant, uh, Fantastical. But the, with Fantastical, I don't think it's actually very nice to look at. And people I see all over the place, people say it's really beautiful. And I think, fine, that's okay. So I don't actually use the calendar itself in Fantastical, but I use its uh, natural language parsing. So on my iPhone, it's there and I can just quickly grab it through uh, drafts, which I use all the time, and just send it to Fantastical. But I'm never actually opening Fantastical itself. I'm just using its kind of back end uh, abilities to get appointments into the calendar. But for me, as, as everyone on this channel knows, I'm, I'm to do is all the way through. Um, but one of the things that actually came up in recent videos that I did was about where do I do my planning? And that's why I love Evernote because it's so flexible. I can start with an idea. I can be on the subway on a bus and I can say, oh, that's a really good idea. And I capture it. And then when I get home, I've got this full screen on my computer and I can just dump my head. And I don't have to worry about that hierarchical structure that you get in, um, what do you call it? Uh, in all to-do list managers, it's, it's kind of like a database. So you've got these fields. With Evernote, it's just I can just dump images. I can dump links to videos. It's just so easy to do the planning. But the one thing that I do do is from Evernote, 
once I've finished that list, I do have like a master list of tasks at the bottom, which I've been adding, and then I can copy and paste that into Todoist and create the project around that. But everything for me just starts in Evernote. And then it will get distributed. I think, Scott, you mentioned about, you know, with things will start in Google Keep. You keep it around for a while, and then it'll just get distributed to other places. Same for me. It's just Evernote's where it all starts, and things will get distributed from there. But I've got to confess about Fantastical. I, I do use it, and I, but I'm only using the back end of it. I'm not using the front end of it, if you like. Um, my calendar is basically the one I'm looking at is Apple Calendar on my computers. It's just, and actually even on my iPhone, I keep going back to it because it's just cleaner. And I'm very much into that clean look. So, <laughs> but those are my three is um, Apple Calendar. But I'm with you on that, Scott. I, I, my calendar, um, usually when I do my final review at the end of the day, I will then, the next day, I will block time out for focused work. Um, and I do all that on my calendar. I, I wouldn't rely on a list, a to-do list, because there's too much distraction. I can see like from 10 till 11, I'm gonna write this, and from 12 till two, I'm gonna record this. I, I, I need that in my calendar, and that's what, similar to you, Scott, I do use it very much in that way. Yeah, I find you know some people, even if they fall in love with a, a great to-do list manager or task app, is it's that relationship between where you need to be or the phone calls or meetings you need to be on and then those other tasks. And if they are completely separate or if they're hard to merge or hard to see on the same screen, it seems like it's a disconnect, right? It seems like you're almost managing two different people. This is the meeting, Scott, and then this is the task, Scott. Well, you're one person, so you should have all those things in an easy to see view. And of course, you know, many of the, the best or, or better task list managers can integrate with your calendar so you can see uh, that information as well. But but yeah, I think it's vital to have a, a good, close relationship with, uh, with your calendar app. Yeah. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that. Definitely. 100%. Well, I think that's wrapped us up for the present. So we're going to hand you over now to Scott. And we're going to move over to his channel for the future. <laughs>